Uh, now, as we usually do in Serbia, uh, the last uh, presenter is actually our host today, and uh, our professor, geographer, a uh, full-time professor at the University of Novi Sad, and uh, I'm proud to say member of the uh, Academy of Science and Arts of Serbia, uh, Professor Slobodan Markovic. Professor, I know that you just arrived from China. Thank you very much for the efforts. Yes. I know it's a uh, jet lag and everything, uh, but uh, it's really, really a pleasure and honor to have you here uh, with us, and uh, I'm uh, very keen to, to listen to your lecture, please. Thank you. I'm afraid that uh, I will make you a little bit disappointed because I'm coming from the different world. Uh, I'm, a, uh, uh, but I'm have same worries like you about the future of the, our uh, our planet. So I would like to tell you something about pure paleoclimatic research and uh, perspective of one paleoclimatic research and how to how to how do I say mention some critical points in the climate change policies. Just to be know, I never was even, a, uh, how they say, deputy director of the, my department, so I don't have anything about policy making, about decision making, so understand that just pure worry of one citizen about future of our planet, okay? So this is, we have, from philosophical point of view, we have two opinions. One is Milankovic heliocentric uh, way of thinking, and another is our egocentric way of thinking about climate change approach. So, last summer we witnessed uh, Lucifer uh, event, extremely hot summer over the Europe, and just to, be, just to know that favorite book of Milankovic was Faust, written by Goethe. So, maybe this is some coincidence. Uh, this is some of the po popular climate change interpretations. People need to worry, but I think people not need to afraid. And this is some egocentric approach. My friend who is artist, he wants to show that he likes to make fishing in the Pannonian Sea, which already not exists so long time ago. My main question is, why politicians worried for climate? Why, why, why that's happened? And Albert Gore visited place, I visited also several times, La Mondorti Observatory of the Columbia University. And I will show you some other stories from this place. And also exist some people who don't, don't believe to Albert Gore. Uh, in La Mondorti Observatory, this is George Kukla, my teacher, uh, who wrote with Robert Matthews in 1972 letter to President Nixon that we will enter to the new ice age. That, uh, that, that were a period of the several very, very cold, uh, cold, cold winters. So uh, I'm afraid that we are humans and we are partly too, too somehow too subjective time to time. And climate change problem, we have different opinions about this story, especially about global warming. Somebody say that this is a scientific problem, some people believe that this is conspiracy theory and geopolitical manipulation. Uh, what we know about climate change, only thing what we really know is Milankovic theory. So Milankovic was member of this academy and very famous member of academy, also Jovan Cvić, he believes that he is not completely correct. And he said to him, people usually enter to the house from the door, not from the chimney. He wants to say that his astronomical theory of the ice ages is a little bit strange. So uh, we also have evidence of the modern increase in the greenhouse gases based on comparison with paleoclimatic research, but we still don't know really how much humans influence the climate. Some influence exists and we need to, no question that we need to fight against these problems, but we don't know how much this influence is big or small or, or medium. So this is Milankovic, that Milankovic uh, believed that people with big belly are more serious. So 
I follow my uh, 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 scientific idol to, to just, just in this case be a little bit more serious. And you can see this minus means in the past and these positive numbers showing the future. That's mean 800,000 years in the future and minus 800,000 years in the past. And you can see the, the, these two curves are this famous curve from Vostok, uh, I score. They, they, this is first paper which, which showed that we have a modern increase of the CO2. So you can see Milankovic curves predict a similar changes in the climate in the future, but we don't know what really happened. So I score people. If you remember movie uh, Day After Tomorrow, uh, the guy who is the main uh, Main, uh, how they say, face in this movie. He did. He doing this this kind of research, and he win in them. And two people from Grenoble, from France, they are popes of the studies of the polar climate based on ice cores. Can you imagine? They drill three three thousand seven hundred meters of the ice on the Antarctica. They reach already rocks on the floor in in this area. This is very expensive and very, uh, how they say, time-consuming work. And you can see many bubbles in the ice. They call them bubbling people. Dominique Reno and, and Jim Joussel, they are popes. And they got a great idea. They decide to, to search, to research, to study these bubbles. Because these bubbles are trapped in uh, atmosphere of the past. And they manage very, very um, delicate analytical methods to measure CO2 changes. And we will discuss a little bit more about this. This scale is not linear. You can see, first we started with hundreds of millions of years, millions of years, and thousands of years. We are at zero. We are at this point, And this line will show the present climate. Just excuse me. This yellow line shows its present climate. The major of the time we spent in the past was, was warmer than today. And we have many crises of the biodiversity based on climate change, but this we, we're talking now about millions of years. But we have just few few years to do something if we want to change things in the positive way. Also, the Holocene. Also, by the way, the last interglacial period, the last uh, period which is similar like today period, we call it Colossine, uh, had six meters higher uh, sea level because all ice on the, on the Greenland was melted. If you, if, you green, if you melt today the ice on the Greenland, we will have six meters higher sea level. If you will melt all ice on the Antarctica, that will be 66 meters higher level on the global scale. So, in the Holocene, and this, this pink curve is insulation curve by Milankovitch, you can see that Holocene climate became more and more dry and more, more and more, how they say, colder. But this is not really cold. Colder in comparison with early Holocene period. But we can see that we have permanent increase even before modern Modern period of the CO2 e methane in the atmosphere. So, what we can learn from the past? You can see 400,000 years ago, uh, in the natural condition, CO2 jumping for 40 ppm. This is what's happened 400,000 years ago. And this is much less than we have changes today. So, without the human influence, we will once, we don't know, for example, we did some research and we found very, very warm loving snails in the Irig, for example, in the slopes of Rushka Gora. If you have money, invest house in Irig because there, this is not so high today. And in 20,000 years, that would be <laughs> very good investment. And your grand 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 grandsons will say, my grand 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 grandfather, he will, he had good vision and invest very well money because London will be close again to the ice limit 
uh, in the new ice age. So this is one solution. Another solution, because of increase of the greenhouse ga gases, we will have a little bit prolonged policy, <laughs> modern intervention period, oh, excuse me, or we will have super intervention period, something which never happened when man will change climate, which never can be adopted to the natural pulses. What is good? We believe we are egocentric and we believe that we are too important. Fortunately, I think that we don't influence climate so much. If we will influence climate so much, that will be disaster. That will be even worse than very, very bad, uh, how they say, predictions we have. Humans are not enough serious uh, beings, creatures, which can control our planet. Fortunately, all, all energy we produce in, in the Earth is 6,500 times smaller than energy we're receiving from sun. Okay. Uh, for example, I am afraid that stories about ozone hole will not be the model for climate change because ozone hole still exists, but nobody don't discuss about it. And what is the most important? I think we need first to understand really Earth climate model that we can really evaluate influence of the man. And I am afraid that without of new energy we will produce, we will have a problem because we still use the fire like our, our paleolithic friends. Our using of the fire is more sophisticated, but we need new style of energy. Of course, we need to care about adaptation, resilience, and other things, but crucial thing is to find new efficient source of energy. This is not good for me because I can easily receive the project as a paleoclimatic researcher, but if we want to talk about true solution, true solution is new energy, better energy and, and enough big source of energy. And finally, my question is, why is problem to have warm climate? Then, for example, new ice age. If, if new ice age happened, Canada will again be covered by ice. So our friends from Bosnia will come back. <laughs> and what we can do in this case? <laughs> I'm joking, of course. Uh, and my, my question is, how, how science can help? And does our society is ready to accept a new scientific challenges? Those two boys are born in the same age. One has name Milutin Milankovic, another one Alfred Wegener. You know, puzzle, South continents can be puzzled. South America can be f fixed to the Africa, uh, Australia to the South, um, South Africa and so on. First guy who first did this story was Wegener. He married, he married the, the middle daughter of the Vladimir Kepler. Vladimir Kepler was normal. In this, in this time, he will receive money from your foundations because he was reasonable. But he found that his son is love is strange. He has revolutionary ideas and he wants to change the opinion of the normal scientist. And he said, exists one strange guy in Serbia. His name is Milankovic. Work together. You, you are similar. You need to fight. And my question is, can we today recognize really scientific approaches? Because decision makers and policy makers push us to write projects we would like to know results before we start our studies. This is reason because I never received the project, by the way. This is my intention to receive some of the projects in the future because everybody needs money. Okay, they, they, they are a little bit older. And so the, the main question of this presentation is how science really ha can help. I think that how science in present moment, how you create, decision makers create science. Scientists are not potent now because we need to say these pillars, without the pillars, I cannot re receive the project. 
My uh, lady who is responsible for, for office, international office in my faculty, she's excellent. She always say, first pillars. And I, when I listen pillars, I don't want to continue to write this proposal. Because I, I don't know what, what can people do as a decision makers. This is very complicated job. And I agree that Europe giving uh, the best approach to the world how to deal with these problems. But without of proper input to this system, to this mechanism, be, 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 uh, with the exception of the good scientific prediction, real prediction, we will be always in the problem. And my question is, some people are very cited. Some people also cited me. I don't know why, but I, I have quite well numbers. But to be fair, I can tell you, I didn't write anything serious and clever in the last several years. But can we find good scientific approach in the time of scientific hyperproduction? This is my question. Just good science get, can be good cooperators to decision makers, into policy makers, and maybe we will survive. Before we will make a new program to cosmic escape, I wish to all of us good scientific approach to better understand climate change in the, in the their complete view and to understand what will happen for our planet in the future. And I hope that my grandsons will have reasonable environment in the future. Thank you very much for your attention. Ah, thank you, Professor. And now, now I'm speechless, really. Uh, the, I told you it, uh, the surprise always comes at the end. I hope that uh, we will all uh, leave the room with a uh, lot of questions that we just uh, raised. Uh, I will uh, remind you that at quarter past six, in front of the building, we will start with the city tour. Whoever is interested, feel free to join us. The city tour will uh, be guided through the city center and we will finish at eight directly in front of the botanical garden where the cocktail will start. For all of you who will skip the, keep, skip the city tour, see you at eight o'clock uh, in the botanical garden. Feel free to join us uh, for light dinner and some nice drinks and nice atmosphere. And uh, what can I say more that uh, the just green transition, obviously, uh, needs just good science and that we can uh, bring as a message from this first day. Uh, take rest, enjoy the beautiful day and see you in the evening for the, for the cocktail. Thank you very much. <laughs>